This episode is brought to you by Factor. It can be hard to find time to cook your everyday meals at the end of the year, especially when your calendar is jam-packed with holiday plans. And from all the holiday cooking, sometimes you just want a meal that's convenient. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service that delivers chef-prepared, dietitian approved meals straight to your door. I loved how I could skip that extra trip to the grocery store and how these fresh, never-frozen meals were ready in two minutes. I didn't realize how much time I was saving by not having to chop, prep, and clean. Not to mention, I was really digging this sausage and pasta dish, and my partner loved his jalapeno chicken dish because he loves spicy things. The best part, too, is the meals felt healthy. And normally when I'm busy, I may resort to takeout a little too often. This November, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Head to factormeals.com slash datable50 and use the code datable50 to get 50% off. That's code datable50 at factormeals.com slash datable50 to get 50% off. Hi, I'm Yui Shu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Brunch Talk brought to you by the Dateable Podcast. We are here to help you on your dating journey and helping you answer your burning dating questions to the best of our ability. And, you know, hopefully we'll give you the answer you want. But if you want to go deeper, you can always go to brunch with your friends, tell them about this, and keep the conversation going. Yes. A lot of these questions are hot discussion points. There could be a yeah. lots of different opinions about these. But Julie and I are going to answer these questions from a personal point of view, from our own experience, but also from our almost eight years of doing this podcast, where we've talked to thousands of daters in relationships, out of relationships, newly single, single for 10 years. Like We've talked to people from all stages of their love lives so we can gather that information and be the dating sociologists that we are. So <laughs> hopefully we're equipped to answer this question. <laughs> <You> sure are. <laughs> for this show. I think people will trust us enough at this point. <laughs> the question is, can a first date just be a vibe check? Love this question. And this is one that you could really debate all day. Yep. So our listener that wrote in said, I wholeheartedly believe dating is metaphorically the highway to an exclusive relationship. Everything a man does, no matter how minuscule, furthers the car along the road. This was written by a hetero man putting that out there. The thing is, I like planning, but it can be exhausting being the one who needs to make every move and plan every date, especially for a stranger. I like doing a vibe check first so I can be more selective about who I pour my energy into, but then it gets misconstrued that I'm not a planner or a relationship material. Am I wrong for using vibe checks to retain some level of control of the relationship car while we blindly fly through the left lane of love? Please let me know. Sincerely, my heart's too big for my body and my body's huge. So poetic. <laughs> How to read that one verbatim because it just was too good. And also good. visually, I'm just picturing this <laughs> <laughs> the sign off. Wow, it's very poetic. It's also a very good question because it goes back to expectations, what people yes. expect for a first date. Julie and I always talk about this. First date is more of a meetup. You're just like, hey, how are you? You know, like, I just want to make sure you're a real person. And it is a vibe check. But some people don't see a first date as that. Some people see it as like, you got to go to dinner, you got to do drinks, you got to do something more involved. So the way I want to see this is instead of guessing what people's expectations are, get on a call with them, get on a video call or phone call and talk about what you both expect from that first meeting. And then you already do the vibe check over the phone. And so your first meeting can be a little bit more involved if you like. But what you don't want to do is ending up in a place where both people are expecting different things. And then you get misconstrued as the person who doesn't plan when you are just like, hey, we're just trying to get to know each other. I feel like the one good thing about dating during COVID was that we did video yes, and phone calls. Yes. And it's somehow gone to the wayside. We've gone back to all of our old ways. And 
I think that this needs to be brought back because that the underlying problem here is that this person in today's world, if you're using dating apps, you're going on a lot of dates. And the reality is most of them aren't going to work out. And it can be a lot. And especially if you are more traditional, I'm gathering from this guy that he feels like he wants to take the lead. He wants to do the planning. It can be a lot to do that for every last person. So therefore, go on less dates instead. And I like the idea of bringing that back. This is so hard, though, because I admit, like, as you were saying that, I'm like, I agree with you 100%. Like, it's a vibe check. It's a way to meet. Like, that's my logical brain. And then I'm thinking, if I went on a date and the guy was like, let's just meet up, go to a park. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, no. So same, I see where this same. is coming from. I see it. I get it. And I've totally judged people before yes. for having cheap dates. Another thing that should come back from the pandemic, park dates, like all the creative ways that we dated, we've like fallen back. I know. I think the most important thing is to do the pre-calls like you were saying, but also just say like, hey, like I am someone that loves to plan dates. It's like I fully that just openly transparently say it. I'm going to be honest that with dating apps, it makes it really hard for me to do that for every last person. Mm -hmm. So I do like to like just get to know someone a little more organically, like I would if we met out and about and use apps that way. Are you game for just meeting up no expectations, at least for the first one and calling this a pre date even? And then at that point, we go on our actual date. I love that. I think that really sets the expectation. Because I agree with you, Julie. Like, logically, it makes sense. But then when someone yeah. does it and they don't cool. communicate it, you're like, yeah, cheap ass. Yeah. Like, took me for a walk around the block. <laughs> or you Once. think they're not into you and you're not, like, worth it, you know? Right, or they don't take you seriously. So I think that yeah. that is really important to just set that expectation. But I like how you couch that in, I do like planning dates. Yeah. That's really fun for me, but this is not a date yet. And it's nothing personal. You got to say that, too. Like, this is just the world we're in. And I really, truly believe that because, like, we hear people complain about dating apps because everything feels so mm -hmm. forced. Like, the first time you meet, you have to make a decision right away if you want to keep dating this person. Opposed to if you meet IRL, it's more natural. You just let things progress. So maybe you could be revolutionary and say, I'm trying to bring those tactics to dating apps. And then you don't come off as a cheap ass yeah like this is a vibe check date <laughs> vibe, check, the word -date. vibe check i think that needs to go too i feel like if someone said vibe check i'd like would feel like they were like sizing me up i like pre-date yeah yeah because it's a check it's like yeah what are you checking it feels me icky yeah. so it sounds like a test yeah pre-date or like a meet and greet a meet and greet meet up we're doing yeah. a little meet up something casual you seem cool just want to see you in person kind of thing keep it casual and all of that yeah. but it's not a date the minute you say date it just sounds so formal and it feels like it needs to be planned out oh yeah there is also I'm glad that this question is coming in because this goes out to many of you out there if you're experiencing a similar conundrum it's like don't go out on that many dates stop going right. on back to you're back on too many dates, dates. Yeah. you're all getting so burnt out because you're just like going out with everybody that you meet be more discerning with who you meet up in person and maybe you all can actually start planning nicer dates because then you'll have the time and the resources to do so I do feel for guys, though, because even let's say you go on one date a week. Yeah, that can be freaking expensive. And again, it's the logical brain. I'll speak as a hetero woman that you're like, yeah, we should split it. But when that bill comes and the guy doesn't like take care of it, there is an ick feeling. Yes. At least for me. I don't want to say for every woman. It's a total double standard. I get that. I'm admitting it. But I feel for men right now because there's no winning, it feels like. Yeah. So then it goes back to for all the women out there, hetero women out there, so many of you complain about conversations that go nowhere on the apps, that you're just like in this texting black hole with some guy you're chatting with. What if we could all take more initiative and do the asking out and then just setting the expectation? I like to take you out for drinks, like say that. Yeah. And hopefully, I think the right partner for that kind of vibe is someone who goes, 
oh, I want to do that for you too, right? I want to step it up because you stepped it up. You just keep encouraging each other. What you don't want is a partner who's like, oh, okay, I'll just let you take care of everything because you're the one leading everything. So we all got to just like let go of these gender roles a little bit and step back and be like, what do I want and how do I go after it? Before we keep going, I want to take a quick break to hear from some of our sponsors. Our Finding Your Person program is open for registration right now. Are you ready to cut through the BS of modern dating and find your person already? We sure felt that way when we developed the Finding Your Person program. The endless swiping and bad dating behavior can really take a toll on your outlook. And do you ever feel like you have every other aspect of your life figured out except for your love life? That's why we have relaunched the Finding Your Person program that has previously sold out time and time again. And by talking to thousands of daters over the last seven plus years, we've been able to pinpoint exactly what helps people find their person. Registration is open right now, but it's not going to stay open for too much longer. We're closing it December 3rd or when we reach full capacity, whichever comes first. So get on it now. Spots are limited. Go to find findingyourperson.com to sign up. Again, that's findingyourperson.com. So let's say you ignore our advice about communicating this pre-date. Let's say you also feel like I want to pay or you are a hetero woman and doesn't want to split all that. How do you start to plan dates that aren't as big of an investment as this like pre-date without communicating it's a pre-date? Well, one, keep them during the daytime. Mm. It's already better that way because you're avoiding alcohol. We've already talked about sober first kiss, gauging chemistry when you're sober. So that's already a win for you. And then two, just daytime dates just seem more casual, right? I like that. Yeah. You can be outside or maybe there's an event you want to just like meet up at that can just be a lot more casual. And I have many girlfriends who are listening to this who would say, well, if they don't ask for a nighttime date, they don't take me seriously. A nighttime date is more formal. So as the person who is suggesting the daytime date, maybe you can just say that, like, I really like nighttime formal dates. But for our first one, I would love to just get more of a daytime vibe. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think anything that you can like time box and then yeah. also spend box, like yes. a huge, I know it's funny because there was this whole debate about the person that took someone out for ice cream. Oh, and you know, the woman like went on, there was like, I forget where it was. It was like blew up on TikTok or some website or something about just like how that this, like they would never accept a date that was ice cream and like the audacity to ask for something like that. Oh but I think ice cream personally is a great date, a great date because how much is ice cream really? Yeah. $5 like, or coffee. I mean, I think coffee is, doesn't feel as like romantic, but like anything like in that realm that you aren't going to have to splurge for that much, but you can still be chivalrous and like be the one that pays for it. I think that's a good option or loving the idea still, this was big in the pandemic, but I still think it can happen is picnic in the park, love wine bottle in the park. Like you could do that for sunset. So then it becomes night date territory as well. But what are you out? $10 for a bottle of wine, $20 if you're a big splurger. You know, like you can control that, which is really nice. And it doesn't like I think drinks like you can go with a theory of, oh, we'll just get one round of drinks. But how often is it really one round of drinks? Yeah. Usually people don't stay for just one round, even if they're not into you because they feel like it's rude to leave after one round. So I think that can actually add up fast. But thinking about just the alternatives that still can feel like something and also even like the walk date. I think if someone's just like, oh, let's just go for a walk that feels really lame and like no effort. <laughs> but if yeah. someone's like, let's go to a walk to the beach or let's go to a walk to my favorite place X in my city, whatever that might be. I think that feels more intentional, like they're planning something, even though let's be honest, they're just walking to a destination. They just called it out. Yes. I like there's something about the touring your own city date where you and your date can say, well, I want to take you to my favorite XYZ in the city. Maybe you've never been to it. So then you both get a chance to show each other something and it can be more interactive. Maybe it's like not even a restaurant or a bar. It's like, I want to show you my favorite mural 
Yeah. You know, in my neighborhood, that could be kind of cool too, just playing tourists in your own city. I also like the picnic idea because it can be very collaborative. It can, like, if you both find out you love cheese, you can say, like, let's do a little picnic in the park and we'll each surprise each other with our favorite cheese and do a little taste test. Like, that seems really fun and cute and, like, definitely not that expensive. So before we wrap this episode, I want to get your take on one thing. Okay. So I've seen this happen before, but the person that's like the serial dater lining up all the meet and greets, they have their (laughs) one go-to bar Uh and they suggest that all the time. It's usually a block from their home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Having your place that you basically let people rotate in and out of? I used to fucking do that in New York. (laughs) There was a bar down the street called Amber, and (sighs) I knew the bartender. She was suss them out for me, and it was brilliant. As a woman, I think that makes sense because it's more of a safety measure for me, right? I know that the bartender's got my back. I know when nobody's roofing me, and I know that I can like just walk home. So I think there's something to be said about that. But for the guys out there (laughs) who do this purely (laughs) out of laziness, you can tell. I think it's such a turnoff to go on a date and the guy's like, oh yeah, I chose this place because it's a block away from my house. I'd be like, oh, all right. I see how it is. (laughs) I was going to say, it's only lazy if someone can find out. Yeah. There were so many times that I did that and I'm like, I'm just not going to reveal that I live like a block away. See, this is where I feel like the gender roles are okay in this. Uh-huh. I feel like, again, there's like a safety yeah. aspect to all of this. And I think it's absolutely okay and also encourage for women to suggest <laughs> someplace as near their house. Yeah. But make sure that it's not like right next to your house because then your dates will all know where you live. Okay. Well, this was such a good conversation. We're all for the vibe check. Maybe rebrand it. Don't tell people they're going on a vibe check. Better <laughs> communicate it. At least show that if things do progress, like you are going to step it up a notch. Yes. Love that. Thanks for that question. Thanks for listening, y'all. If you like to get your brunch talk questions in, you can email us. Hello at Datable Podcast is our email. You can DM us on Instagram at Datable Podcast or better yet, leave us a rating and review in Apple Podcasts. First, give us five stars. That's step number one. Step number two, tell us your question. Ask your question in the body of your review. If you've already asked questions in the past, did you know that you could actually update your reviews? And it'll just write over your previous review. So you can do that as well. You can ask as many questions as you want. And if you don't have a question and you just want to express your love for us, (laughs) that will take as well. That's not a vibe check. (laughs) You've already passed a vibe check at that point. You're in. We're in a full-blown committed relationship. (laughs) (laughs) Monogamous. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thanks again for listening. Make sure to subscribe so you get this and all of our other episodes delivered right to you as soon as they are released. See y'all next week. See you next week. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Thank you.